Hello and welcome to the Little Brothers in the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. Uh, much overdue conversation about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which I did finally see two times now. Um, that has now that it is on Disney Plus, um, and the second time through, I took extensive notes. So I can't believe you watched it twice. Uh, I mean, like I was watching it like in chunks anyway, you know, like on lunch yeah. breaks and stuff. And then like I was watching it like at night. So like I was like, why not just get the full experience? Just go in. I, I have also seen it twice. Actually, now that I say that, I think we still I, I don't think I finished it the second time. Sure, sure, sure. I, I have. Yeah, I saw it in the theaters, saw it at home. Uh, I think that my second watch of it made me enjoy it more. Um Interesting. Yeah. You know, I was concerned. We've talked in the past about the kind of like the gradual dip in visual quality of MCU stuff, which is just kind of, it's because they're making so much, it appears. I, I wouldn't think that would be true. It seems silly. Like it just hire more people. Like it seems like, but for whatever reason, there's been this kind of drop in visual quality starting around Black Widow. Um, but but I didn't, I only noticed that like once or twice in I did Doctor not, Strange. I didn't really think anything about it. I, we've talked about it a lot. Like yeah. but I, this movie did not strike me as green screen, you know, even though we know it all is. <laughs> right, right, right. That's true. And, and, and there was a few things that I think maybe were not um, critically. Like I think if Sam Raimi brought anything to the MCU that will carry forward, I think it's this idea that like, you know, if you want a door to blow shut and like a bunch of doors blow shut in this movie, um, <laughs> you can actually just blow a door shut. Like you don't need to CGI the door. That said, there are a few doors that blow shut in this movie that I think looked like they're CGI'd, but still like. Now, now that you've seen it. Yeah. Now that you've seen it. The, before we, before you had seen it, you said that Sam Raimi had commented that he did not feel like he had as much of a touch on it as he wanted or something along those lines. Yes. Do you disagree with that now that you've seen it? I, here's what I think. I think there's two halves of this movie. I think there's a Rick and Morty half. And then I think there's a Sam Raimi half. And the Sam Raimi half is the second half. And yes. it's really weird because you wouldn't think that would be the case because they don't make movies chronologically. Like they don't, the first day of shooting a movie is not the first scene and then right. continuing through it from beginning to end. And yet it does feel like you can see when Sam Raimi took over. But I think that has a lot to do with the way these stories are developed because an MCU story is like, here's all these different pieces, right? And here's how we set them up. And then here's how we have to knock them down. And this is the position they have to be knocked down in at the end of the movie. Right. The space where there's the most room for making your own mark is how those dominoes fall over. But you know, but that's where Sam Raimi got to show his influence. And I, it's heavy at times. I know. And, and fun. That's why you said that to me and I was like, what? It's yeah. like very much a Sam Raimi movie. Like- I wonder um, what the deal with that is, you know? Because I mean, he, who knows what you, when it comes to reporting about the MCU, who knows what's real and what's fake? Um, but the word was that, you know, that Sam Raimi was, or actually Sam Raimi literally said that he felt like he didn't get to do as much as he could. Who knows why he was saying that? Maybe he was hoping to get another job with MCU, you know? Maybe he was trying to mark this as separate from his own, like, sort of independently created works. Totally fair, totally fine. Another story I've heard about this is that Sam Raimi directing the movie has apparently made, they say, it's made Kevin Feige more interested in dudes like that. Like yes, guys who kind of run their own ships because, yeah. um, you know, I mean, obviously Kevin Feige already had a relationship with Sam Raimi, but Sam Raimi has been around the block a bunch of times. And yeah. in the past, the MCU strategy was like, let's get these up and comers. You know what I mean? Like your Kuglers and your Jows and that kind of thing. And I think there's, I think at this phase, when Disney is making them pump out content so much, they're seeing the appeal of like, let's bring in an expert so that 
Kevin Feige can only, only has to touch this once a week instead right. of it being like his whole job all the time. Well, and, and my concern with that is um, that this guy's a master storyteller and we need his hands all over it. But um, my concern with that is that this worked out. That's uh, basically undeniable. It was a wildly successful movie. Okay, so all right, so let's get into overall. Give me your overall thoughts on Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Multiverse of Madness. Um, it's strange. That is definitely um, weird. It's I really I like it. I like it. I think it's really good. I think that it's um, um, if we're doing a Doctor Strange storyline, I think it's uh, a good um a good wild time, you know? Um, and it's also fun to be able to say, um, like, like this is where we do a weird one. And it's like, yeah, it fits that bill. I uh, love Wanda as the villain. Um, I think that it is, I don't need to go this specific into it if you just want to talk broad terms, but like, I think that like saying, um, okay, we're going to see, Wanda murder a bunch of people or we're, we're going to see a villain murder a bunch of people boy you better love that villain and they have that you know where it's like throughout that movie you're kind of like yeah they're 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 at odds with each other and I kind of don't care how it shakes out because I love her and I love him and it's and it's great um I think that it's weirdness sometimes is a detractor from like you're watching it and you're like okay so they're fighting with musical notes right now I, um, love, the, I love the music fight I will defend the music fight forever I'm not um, arguing against it I'm more <laughs> just saying when it's happening you're like what is happening right now sure. I would say I, I feel similar I feel similarly to you I think it was weird I like yeah. that it was weird yeah I have maybe two I have two choices that the movie made that I'm kind of going back and forth on a little bit. Okay. So one of them is this Wanda thing because it feels very sudden, you know, the turn. Like WandaVision does set up that like she gets warned about the dark hold, she takes the dark hold anyway. It really feels like an afterthought and it feels like the character arc um, of where Wanda begins and ends in WandaVision doesn't really end there. So it kind of feels like it kind of feels like we're picking up in a world where WandaVision only sort of happened. You know what I mean? Like it, and that does kind of feel comic booky to me in a way. Like WandaVision was one comics run, and then this is a separate one that's sort of referencing it, but also sort of like only as much as it wants to. Okay. Um, I but I, think I will say that the second time through, it didn't feel as abrupt to me i would say that the, i'm gonna talk about wanda a lot so i feel like i don't even want to stop to comment on that yet okay so are you going to share your second change well, now I, or do well, you want to talk about it the second thing that we'll get to that i feel a little bit strange about is the illuminati sequence and i think just this morning i figured out i, I pinpointed exactly what bugs me about it but okay. let's start at the beginning because okay. the opening yeah. sequence i thought was such a Rick and Morty move. First yeah. of all, coming in so in media res that Doctor Strange is like running in like from this side of the shot, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and like the camera does the spin over thing. It looks like the opening credits of Rick and Morty. Like it does, it's it's identical. I, I, totally agree, totally agree. Same color scheme and everything. And so I thought that sequence was cool. It's also, mm -hmm. by the way, the different Doctor Stranges having very minor facial and hair differences yeah. and the way they interact with each other and talk about each other is also like Rick and Morty laid the whole foundation. That's, that's very true. So we should also say for, for the people who don't know that this is kind of made by Rick and Morty alumni. Yeah. And, yeah. Michael Waldron. And though yeah. the story has always been that Dan Harmon himself had a hand in the original Dr. Strange. Right. And so like, like it's very possible <laughs> that he also had a hand in this as well, but 
well, you know, that's, shadow. That's, yeah, shadow that's what I was going to say. As I hang on, I'm plugging in my laptop, but that's what I was going to say originally. But then I was like, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily know who to cite with what authorship when it comes to Rick and Morty. Like, so it may be that those things that we're identifying in this that seem like Rick and Morty are just Michael Waldron things. Well, and it's also, so the way that I've heard Rick and Morty works is like the writer's room is like, they will be, they will be breaking a story all day long. Mm -hmm. And at five o'clock, Dan Harmon shows up and he goes, yeah, you do it like this. And they all go, oh my God, like he just solved it in like two seconds. So I kind of imagine the idea of like, if you have a professional relationship with this genius, you know, if you're writing a Doctor Strange movie and you're like, oh, I got an idea about this, like maybe you text him and go, hey, what do you think about this? You know? I also think though, like, so Michael Waldron also wrote a lot of Loki. And yeah. so there's, and I listen to interviews with him and stuff and he talks about stuff like Mad Men and other things that he really likes. And, um, you know, I wonder, so he got called out of Loki basically to come work on Doctor Strange. Oh, interesting. And so I thought it was kind of interesting that both of these are Michael Waldron joints, right? But the second one, the one that he got called in for is way more Rick and Morty-ish. Yeah. And so I wonder if it was kind of like he just had to come in real quick and pull his, pull the tools that he keeps at the top of his toolbox in. And I think it really serves the story. I think it's, I think it's great. I, I, um, I like I like the Rick and morty of it. It doesn't seem like too much. It doesn't seem like it's ripping it off. It just feels no, like no. they took the applicable tools yeah. from one story and moved it over to the other. Well, and it's like, uh, basically, no matter what you are doing, if you're going to be talking multiverse stuff, mm -hmm. there's basically no way that there isn't some inter intertwining kind of details of Rick and Morty because Rick and Morty is like the Simpsons of this. It's already done, you know? Like, it's like they have laid the groundwork for like everything when it comes to multiverse stuff. So it's very, um, it's very, it's like, you, you're gonna be adjacent to it without even trying. So Dr. Strange wakes up from what appears to be a dream we later yeah. find out it's not a dream. And in fact, all dreams are just glimpses into your multiversal selves, which is fun. It's very- and Quite the rewrite on things. <laughs> well, it's, it's very, it's very like, I, I think it's a fun, clever thing, but I also like that they undercut it a little bit when Wong is like, what about that dream when I'm running naked from a clown? And she's like, yeah, somewhere out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, sure. You know, because it's like, yeah, you're right. I've had dreams where I feel like it, that's conceivable, right? That I'm like- sure just seeing an alternate life or something. And then I have other ones that are like, of course not. You know what I mean? There's no alternate universe yeah. where a skeleton in the top hat is sitting on the washing machine. Um, so anyway, all right. So Dr. Strange goes to Christine's wedding where Michael Stuhlbarg shows up for a little cameo just to create. Yeah. I'm, my old joke about the first Dr. Strange movie was that I assumed that Michael Stuhlbarg and Rachel McAdams were filming a separate movie about two people in a hospital and just yeah. happened to have some time on their lunch break. So like do yeah. a couple of scenes um, yeah. because otherwise what on earth are they doing in that movie? Yeah. Um, and similarly here, he might've just been walking by. Um, <laughs> so they, uh, but okay. This is what I was going to say to you. I feel like the show, what if tried to do a lot of legwork in terms of the Dr. Strange and Christine romance. Yeah. Like it tried to really remind you that happened and was important somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I feel like the same thing happens here. And it's, um, this movie does a lot more with Rachel McAdams later on. Which it does. Is, but initially sitting there in this wedding scene, I was like, I'm not like, I'll tell you the moment I locked into this movie, okay? Wedding, blah, 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 who knows? On my second rewatch, there's a guy behind Doctor Strange at the wedding, way in the background. And I'm like, is that Loki? Like, it really looks like. Really? It looks like they're going to set something up later where, like, he's there for some reason. And I wouldn't be surprised if, like, where's Waldo? There's kind of, like, a little bit, like, Loki's getting dropped into the background of some of these stories. Wow. Is it I'm just, just, a, just a thought. I don't know. Interesting. So anyway, 
the moment I locked in on the movie is when Dr. Strange goes out to the balcony after talking to Christine. Christine and Dr. Strange have such a, several really good lines in this movie that would be better if their relationship was better established. So like, you have to be the one holding the knife. Great line. I barely know what it means in the yeah. context of their relationship. Like, I mean, actually in the context of their relationship, I have no idea what it means. Sure. I, I know what it means generally. Yeah. And it's a good line. Also, later on, I love you in every universe. Awesome. Amazing. Great line. Mm-hmm. Kind of wasted on a relationship I don't care about. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm like, okay, so like, okay, so like, they're supposed to be this really like torn, torn relationship that, that you always had to be the one holding the knife. It's like, okay, but we've never seen that in their personal lives at all. Every, every clip that we've seen is like, Dr. Strange is madly in love with her and just a really sweet guy who also happens to be a workaholic and an arrogant bastard. But like- I mean, the, the, the first movie, his main flaw is just like, not a good driver. <laughs> well, I know, texting while driving. Um, no, but like, but like, it's like, uh, what, like all we've seen is that he was like madly in love with you and presumably, always a workaholic and obsessed with this thing and never had time you know like it's like right. he was always this thing and you fell in love with him and then it was like oh well you always had to be that way and it was like yeah he always had to be that way you know <laughs> like so it um it like feels it feels very like we got Rachel McAdams so what do we do with her <laughs> Well, I feel like they, yeah, well, it feels like what they're going to do with multiversal Rachel McAdams later is the main thing. And so they need to set it up earlier. And I think that the future thing that they do where they introduce that like in every universe, Dr. Strange is pining for Christine and always screwing it up um, is, is cool. But I just feel like I, it feels like a totally new invention of this movie and not something that's ever really been built before. Which is right. which is fine, but again, it's like so much of so much of the MCU is starting to feel like that. Um, no. It's starting to feel so disparate and not like I'm not like one story anymore, and no. that's okay. But like, show me where that's going, and maybe Thor will finally do that. But I don't know. So, uh, okay. So the moment that I said I was like that I locked in on this movie is when he does that dive off the balcony at the wedding when he sees the octopus. I was like, that is such a cool move. Yeah, it really is cool. Um, and I like that he finishes his drink ahead of time. I'm yeah, like, yeah, ah, yeah. man, you're like James Bond. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, I, I really enjoyed the octopus monster thing. I don't know what it's called or its name or whatever, but um, I really enjoyed the fact that it's not visualized at first. And then he like, you know, yeah. breaks the spell and, and it's revealed and everyone's like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and um, the, 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 the battle itself between, with Wong and Strange and this thing, mm-hmm. the whole time I'm watching it and I'm like, you guys are not taking this seriously enough. <laughs> it's yeah. like destroying buildings and stuff. And you guys are like, oh yeah, how you doing? Like, <laughs> nobody, nobody is. Christine's husband yeah. is like, I'm on the balcony. He's like, oh, it's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, okay, well, like, people are getting murdered on the streets. Yeah. So yeah, man, this is bad. Your surgeon wife needs to scrub up and get to work. Yeah, um, but uh, I wrote also at this point when I was watching it, I wrote, "We are having fun with camera moves and music again, which is nice." Do you remember when we talked about No Way Home and we said like, "There's nothing distinguishable about the music." Mm-hmm. There's a lot that is distinguishable. Yeah, about the score. The music, the, the music is huge in this movie. Yes, um, but so I was having I. I love Wong. Wong's the greatest. I know. When Wong shows up, you're so psyched. It's like, you're like, it's my guy. He yeah. has so many, um, he has so many like badass lines in this. When he says like, Convertage must become a fortress. You're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, um, okay. So I loved, I, I loved how brutal the killing of the, of the monster is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like ripping out its eye. The eye like, falling out separately. And like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, like and it was like so gross and what an awesome way to open a film like of like you have this um you know defender strange and america chavez right off the bat in this in this scene and then we just launch right into the movie 
right. and and it's like boom big battle right away like <laughs> i feel like i had um no real sense of what dr strange's powers really are and i still don't really um but i went from thinking that was a problem like in this scene because like he does the like he does the karate chops air air karate chop that chops off the octopus arm yeah. but then when america chavez falls his cape has to go catch her and i'm like yeah. why can't we do like invisible catcher's mitt um, right you know so i'm like but i as the movie goes on, I'm like, I kind of think it's fun that you don't really understand what he could do because then you can do like a music fight. And so I started to think like Dr. Strange's powers are conditional, like they're contextual. So yeah, I actually think that's true. Yeah, if there's music playing, you can make that music a weapon, whatever. He can just kind of like, it, it's in the it moment, whatever me. he thinks of or can do, he can do that in that moment. It strikes me as like, a more of like, what is your mind capable of imagining that you can do with this right. thing, right. you know? So like with the cape, it's like, that just makes sense. Also the cape is sentient on its own. He, he, you know, I'm sure he does some like go catcher thing, but like, who's to say that it wouldn't have just gone and done that anyway. Mm -hmm. But, um, but also like, if you're thinking, what's my decision here? It's presumably like, oh, well, if I had a cape or something to catch her with, that'd be great. And it's like, oh, I got a cape right here. You know what I mean? Like, right. I think it's more like, what can your mind develop as like, I could do this right now. Yeah. Um, I like, so there's a couple of like little visual touches already that I like in this that are just like a little bit more, <clears throat> more than just like magic beams. There's a part when America Chavez uh, stomps on this piece of concrete to like knock it down onto the octopus and it breaks a star shaped chunk out of it. Yeah. And I was like, that's cool. Um, also, so funny that America Chavez is from another universe, but has the progress pride pin um, <laughs> that like, so I was, when I saw it, I was like, yeah. the artist who created this put a Creative Commons license on it. Like that was a smart move. He had no idea it was gonna spread across universes. I mean, yeah. It's fine. I think it's great. But I just kind of thought that was kind of funny. I was like, shouldn't it just be like a sli less slightly different one? Like, I don't, I don't love the representation with America Chavez because, um, because she is gay in the comic books, mm -hmm. but instead you made her parents gay. I think she is too. I think that jean jacket is supposed to explain that to you. <laughs> well, I, I know, but I also thought, but I also thought like, like that doesn't, that doesn't, I just don't love the idea that it's like, yeah, her parents are gay. And so she's gay too. Like, that's what like people would, you know, like, like, yeah, or, sure. or, I get that. or, sorry, or her earth is all women. Mm. Um, Cause we don't establish that either. Um, but it just, I think I don't it's, know. Know. it's kind of like reductive shorthand. But um, yeah, and people also always point out the way that these, the various LGBTQ representation moments in Disney products are always in a way where they can very clearly be lifted out, um, you know, yeah. for like the China version of the movie or whatever. Um, you know, like yeah. Yeah. you just don't show the parents kissing; you just show them getting sucked into some horrible dimension instead. <laughs> right. I just I don't know. I I didn't necessarily love that but um i love the character in the film and i i think they did a great job with her i like that we kind of did like a spider-man doesn't know what is what to do with his powers kind of storyline with her you know like yeah. uh because it's like you're kind of with america chavez she is a a ridiculously powerful you know person and so it's kind of cool to say, yeah, we're going to introduce her, but she's not there yet. You know, she's not, she's not at full, full potential yet. They're, overall, the MCU has a power inflation problem right now. And so yeah. they're raising the interest rates. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay. So the octopus, so, so Wong and Dr. Strange noticed like runes on the octopus. Yeah. So they go, oh, you know who knows about runes? We should go. <laughs> talk to yeah. Wanda which yeah. at the second time through you're like oh that's actually the first red flag right is right. that it had the runes on it um, yeah. but it did but did, went right past me the first time yeah so so yeah he goes Dr. Strange goes and sees her 
she's not actually living in a beautiful orchard. She's living in like a cursed. <laughs> I love, I love that scene because she, he shows up and she's talking to him and um, I felt like her, oh, you didn't say her name was a little on the nose, but, but I, but I liked it in the moment. I like that. But, yeah. but the flower thing, when he, when she hands him the flower and he goes, they, it's, it's like, almost like they're real. Yeah. It's like, okay, so you know, right. This is not everything that you're seeing, but when she reveals it, it's like, guess what? it's way worse than you thought. You're in hell, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like- I, I also love that. So Elizabeth Olsen does a billion different voices as mm-hmm. Wanda. And this happened in WandaVision too. She's doing all the like, you know, period appropriate accents for TV, like, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and then, but then she has like her, her actual fake accent comes and goes too. Yeah. But then in this movie, she adds this new voice too which is the kind of whispery evil voice. Um, yeah. What did she say? She says, oh, she's like, she says like, she's not a child. And then when she goes like, when she says like, doesn't seem fair, you know, yeah. it's like this, it's like, that's just a totally new weapon in the uh, Elizabeth Olsen arsenal. And it's- She's, it's so, like, she's so good in this movie. Yes. It is, um, like I said, it's very abrupt that we go from, literally 10 minutes of screen time after one division and she's liquefying bodies at Camertage. It's sudden, but it is fun. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I really love, uh, I love the Camertage fight. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that we do s- like, okay. So I love that they're all gearing up so aggressively and she shows up and she's like, but this is a joke, right? Like I'm a, I'm about to lay waste to this place, and I hope you know that. Like, like I, I love, love that the um. I also love that the Green Ox guy is never explained. <laughs> okay, I'm sitting in the theater with Jeremy. First time we see him. What is that? A Minotaur? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then and then and then he cuts back to him, and he's like, "What the hell is this Minotaur doing?" <laughs> He's just there. He's just around. Like it's just, nothing ever happens with him. He's just there. No, nope, no. Nope. Um, and then later when they're getting tortured, he's like, oh, of course you got the Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so um I loved the inclusion of the um the old Wanda power, like the first power that we see of her in the oh, MCU. Yeah, she, like, the is, little, like, is whispering in somebody's ear. Yep. And that's what she, like, she's scanning the crowd in Comitage and she's like, oh, that guy right there, he's weak. I can get to him, you know? Like, <laughs> oh, that's another great Wong line, by the way. When he's like, fortify your minds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's legendary. Um, mm-hmm. The only misfire in terms of the uh, badass talk is when they're talking about how powerful Wanda is. Um, you know, Wong says, like, she's prophesied to either rule or annihilate the cosmos and then dr strange goes she took over an entire town and we're like wait we were just talking about the cosmos <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah flip those and reverse them guys yeah um yes so anyway yeah the commentary sequence is really cool i love once they get inside like once one is chasing them inside again doors blowing shut doors blowing shut there's so yeah. many of these cuts right person goes and then boom, door closes yeah. shut and then another person goes, oh, and then door closes shut. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. it. It's the, like so um, 90s. The reflection stuff, when she comes out of that mirror. Yeah. All like, like all, the, all the ring dislocated. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> like it hurt her in this movie, man. These powers are so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, the, yeah, the reflection thing. I really like that at like at first they're like she's coming through the reflection like that kind of thing but then it it's uh, what it, what does she come through finally is it a gong i think yeah she comes out of a gong like yeah. just i just uh, well, god remarkable restraint on sam raimi's part to not have a gong sound effect somewhere in there or have a character yeah. get knocked into the gong um, yeah must have must have been a cut scene obviously wanda catches up with them 
and ends up like sending Doctor Strange and America Chavez through the multiverse. And we get this fun sequence where they kind of like blow through a bunch of different dimensions really fast. Yeah. I, my, basically my one complaint with this movie overall is that they don't do this enough. Like, you know, I want to see a little more, baby. All right. They always give you like a little less, you know, than you, yeah. than you expect. When you hear Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, you think it's just going to be constantly going through alternate dimensions and kind of seeing like all these different versions of things. But, you know, it is sort of like cost prohibitive because if he's jumping through a bunch of dimensions, he's going to see like every single superhero, you know? Well, so, that, that was one thing that I wanted what, that we didn't get was like, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be funny that, that like, if we did something like just a really quick cut where you see one superhero, like they blast through a street and on that street is a Wolverine. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like th that is a missed opportunity in my mind. I understand we don't get, want to give away the horse, but, yeah. or whatever that expression is. But, you know, like, I just thought it would have been a little fun to see something. Now, there is like the dinosaur land in this scene that yeah. people think, people think is kind of like a nod to the Savage Land mm. stuff from like X Men. Mm. And um, there's actually also, uh, new, new to the shelves of of like comic book shops is a run called um, like it's like Savage Avengers ah. stuff. So I thought that maybe that that might have something to do with it. But yeah, that there's the animated one. I really like the joke about the animated one that like they say something like like eating is really hard there. Yeah, when you're in paint, when you're made out of paint. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, so, I do. The, yeah, the, the one where they go through the Instagram comic book filter is kind of funny. Um, yeah. But yeah, so they end up in 830, 838 New York. I don't know if they, do they specify that? Or I think it's 838 oh. and it's 838 yeah. and 616. So they're in 838 New York where um, everyone dresses in black and white and wears hats. And um, there's a lot of greenery. It looks a lot like, have you seen Free Guy? Um. I don't know if I've seen Free Guy. I can't remember. It looks yeah. like the, it looks I like the, it looks like uh, it looks like Boston at the end of Free Guy, um, which is where that they speaks, shot that. That speaks but, to that movie that I don't remember if I've seen that. But it's 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 a pretty forgettable one. It's enjoyable yeah. but forgettable. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, oh, and then red lights and green lights are reversed, which is just just like it's people made fun of that. I saw people making fun of that on Twitter. They were like. What is, like that it. is the least imaginative thing you could think about. I don't know, red lights and green lights. But it's a setup for Doctor Strange's most Rick Sanchez-like line, which is when they find Mordo and Mordo is friendly to them and he invites them yeah. inside yeah. and he says, go on red, you know? And it's like, yeah. it's, that's the most, yeah. the most Rick moment of the whole thing. And it's great. Yeah. Um, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't belch. But like, it kind of would have been funny if he did. I really like the use of Mordo in this because quite honestly, Doctor Strange 1 ends with Mordo being like, all sorcerers gotta die, you know? Right. And, then, <laughs> yeah, and then just never again. <laughs> and well, and, and what I, what I, I was like, no, I don't want that. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't want that storyline. Mm -hmm. Don't do that, you know? And I liked that it was like, no, but guess what? They are all kind of evil. Yeah, like um, I think he's I think he's very he's very funny in this. Um, there's yeah. a moment where he gets so later on he and Doctor Strange are like fighting, um, and he um, he gets dropped. He gets like knocked down into this pit below, and Doctor Strange gets out. And yeah. so as he's leaving, he's shouting after him. And it's so funny because you think it's going to be like this really aggressive or like angry line. But what he says is he's like, yo, I think I'm beginning to see why your Mordo didn't like you very much. Yeah. <laughs> it's like such a funny thing to shout. Yeah. The, um... So like lukewarm and silly. It's such a great joke. Like that's, and it's like a perfect delivery. So there are a lot of fun things within them being held by well so so they get drugged they're 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 held in those cells that's oh, when yeah. we, that's when we find um rachel mcadams is there 
you know, new, new, new and improved Rachel McAdams. And she says that she's a fellow for the Baxter Foundation. And I was she like, does. Yeah! yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah. The, um, yeah, I really enjoyed that inclusion. And I really loved that um, they used the Illuminati. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because this is a, this is a team that is formed basically in the comic books. It's like post, um, don't hold me to this as far as like actual canon, but it's basically um, after the infinity gauntlet, there is a storyline of like, what do we do with these stones? And the Illuminati forms as like Black Panther, Iron Man, Professor X, Namor. Um, I think Black Bolt's there. And, and so they form this like shadow organization to kind of control. And the usage of them as like, the Illuminati are the people, you know, they're, they're, they're lying to the people about what happened with Dr. Strange. Cause the world needs a hero. Like all this stuff is like, this is good stuff, man. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about them. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely want to get to the Krasinski of it all, but maybe it's <laughs> easier to go through some of the other stuff early. I never watched the Illumin, uh, the Inhumans show. It's, so. um, it's funny that you say you never watched it because it is unwatchable. It doesn't, you can't find it anywhere? No, it's horrible, horrible, oh. <laughs> horrible. It's, it's so bad. Ah, I see. I will tell you, I watched maybe two episodes of it. Mm-hmm. I, I know that they, I think that maybe because of Doctor Strange 2, Disney put it out on Disney Plus. I don't know. Oh, okay. But, but um, they did bury it for a while because they were so embarrassed by it. Yeah. Um, he did not, in the, sh- in the show, he did not have the helmet. Oh. And the inclusion of the helmet is so cool to me. It's a good look. Uh, it's a good look. That, I like um, his look. Um, I think that, uh, uh, what's her name? Captain Marvel Maria Rambo is, that's not a great look. Um, it's just, no, just very I, unimaginative. I agree, but I also think that they are all weirdly portrayed in the lineup as right. like it they look different they look like it it's like i had a very hard time trying to figure out if that was the same woman from captain marvel like it is right yeah, yeah it is it is the same actress yeah. yeah um but but um i think that it's almost like like even even again before we talk about him even john krasinski's outfit looks like a little weird it's 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 hard to describe it's like they're all designed very similarly mm-hmm. to look off or something um i mean the john krasinski one looks literally exactly the same as the fan cast image of him that has been around yeah. forever and yeah. to the point where i didn't think he was going to be in the movie i i think i saw images from it before i saw it and i just thought oh that's just that fan cast image again you yeah. know what i mean I was curious, actually, if that was spoiled for you beforehand. I, I mean, Professor X and Captain Carter are both in trailers. So I knew that was coming right? um, already. And so the John Grinitsky part did surprise me. And, but, and I was happy to see it, but then immediately started to feel like something's off here. Like, even just in the scene, when he's talking to Dr. Strange, there's something about the eye lines that are just not lining up. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't know if you know this, but did you, I just, I was just Googling stuff and I found this, that they did an interview with Elizabeth Olsen. I knew, I was gonna, dude, I've been waiting for weeks to bring this up with you <laughs> because I was like, it confirmed everything you have been talking about right. with with these characters not actually being in the same room right. together. And Elizabeth like Olsen that. had no idea who John Krasinski was despite sharing a scene with him in this movie. I don't know this person. Yeah. And they were like, they were like, you're in a movie with him. Yeah, they thought she was joking. Yeah, they thought she was joking and she was like, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, no joke. John Krasinski getting put into this movie probably happened on a soundstage three weeks before it came out. Like, Do you know, do you know that he was not the initial person? No, who do they have originally? It was going to be Daniel Craig shows up as Mr. Fantastic. Huh. Okay, but it was like a COVID thing and he backed out. Interesting. He was like, he was like, no, I'm not going to do it. Um, now, I think, okay, so um, 
I love the inclusion of Professor X being the animated TV's Professor X. Even though he looks so shrunken down inside his little his wheelchair. Well, but he's also like 90. And, I know, you know, that's true. He does, I mean, um, but when he's up and walking around, you're like, he looks pretty good. He looks pretty spry, you know? Yeah. Okay. So that whole, okay. So I love the yellow chair. That's amazing that you yep. included that. I, I love, like using the X-Men theme. Yes. I love the theme. Um, and I loved later when he grabs her and mm -hmm. goes into her mind. That was such good Professor X power you like 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 sh Visual actually image. showing us yeah. something that that like we've seen similar stuff in the past with him but this was just the perfect demonstration of like this is what it would be like like he's like he he grabs you and he walks into this white void and finds the thing that he's looking for within right. your mind what i like cool... i like that whole sequence i like the red mist as wanda comes in yes I thought the her like snapping his neck was so brutal. Yeah. Um, and I kind that one I I kind of liked. And yep. I guess I liked it in part because he got to do a little more. Yep. So okay. So it very much appears through everything Marvel is saying that John Krasinski is not going to play Mr. Fantastic. I disagree, but okay. I mean, they might just this might be a smoke screen, but they said it was like for the fan service and yeah. they've been suggesting this idea that it might be someone else when he shows up in a different universe which if it is feels like a huge branding mistake um yes but also it just the whole sequence as soon as he gets spaghettified by wanda i was like okay i know that the mcu will always kind of like defy expectations right? But normally, they defy expectations by giving you more than you thought you were going to get. And the fight scene between Wanda and the Illuminati is it's not good. Like, it's boring. Like, I've watched it twice. Yeah. Nothing really, there's one cool shot where Captain Marvel and Wanda are kind of both in the air, magic shooting at each other, and the force of it kind of, like, rocks Wanda back in this weird anti-gravity kind of way. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, the one shot that I maybe a little bit of the way that Captain Carter moves around with the jetpack and stuff but it's so quick and yeah. you just get you just get nothing you get yes. almost no visualization of how like Mr. Fantastic's powers work right well he it does sense right. because they probably want to punt on that because it's hard to do <laughs> but like you just get nothing so I was like I don't the reason I don't like this is I like I love the idea of the rug being pulled out from under me and you like, oh, meet all these new characters. Now they're all dead. Instant. Yeah. Yes. Brutally killed. But yeah. okay, so, okay, so here's the thing. Um, what I liked about it was it struck me very much as they do all these um, uh, one shot kind of storylines in mm -hmm. the comic books where they where they do like Wolverine kills the X-Men. Right. Sure. Okay. Sure, sure. And that's what it struck me as, as like, as like Wanda kills the Avengers, you know, in right. this one little scene where it's like, here's their Avengers. Guess what? She murders them. Like it was nothing to right. her. Okay. Um, couple of things. Number one, I would be heartbroken if he did not, if John Krasinski did not come back as Mr. Fantastic, because you have now given it to me. OK, uh -huh. and the defying expectations thing is is supposed to be a it, it's 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 supposed to be fun. And you took that from me in this because you killed him in like the most brutal way possible. Um, I loved what mouth I laughed so hard at that. And yeah, that was, twice. and it was uh, like very successfully gross and upsetting like his head yeah. like collapses yeah um and uh that was great i loved that and i don't think it necessarily set up enough that like everyone's about to die mm -hmm. maybe it did but it's hard for me to think about it because i was so upset in the theater when john krasinski dies like so brutally and abruptly yeah. because it was like this we've wanted this for so long <laughs> that's why i don't think 
you are, I think he has to be Mr. Fantastic in the future. And if he isn't, maybe enough time will have passed where I will have gotten over that, mm -hmm. but I don't think it will. I think that it will be very, I think I will not like that. It feels um, like they're signaling that he's not, but they might be doing that as a sort of fake out. Yeah, um, I agree. And I also think that, um, I mean, I've read stuff that makes me think that he will be involved in it, but okay. I th this is the thing. I love John Krasinski. Like, I think he's great. I have a lot of affection for, for Jim Halpert, but I just feel like he does this version of, of Reed Richards. There's just nothing, nothing happens. Like he doesn't make a joke. He doesn't, he seems kind of smart. Yeah. He explain a few things. Yeah. Um, he seems kind of like, I don't know. He's very, he has a very dad energy, which is the yeah. right, right for Reed Richards, but there's no other, there's nothing else there. He is a daddy for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so one of the comic books I selected to put behind me mm -hmm. was um, uh, this Fantastic Four that is the um, first, first appearance of Franklin Richards as an avatar, as an adult. It's like a whole thing that happens with his powers. But this is one of their children. Oh. Um, Franklin Richards is one of their children. People think that the the line about him having kids is to signal the idea that they will have children in the future storylines mm -hmm. and so that's a thing i guess i don't know um the I reason almost, i have that what by the way i almost thought that rachel mcadams was going to be like the his woman like based on her like outfit you know i thought and yeah that's, that's that that going to be a reveal yeah, that's not that's not wild i mean that's yeah, yeah. I mean, especially if we're doing this whole, this is a separate universe where, no, it's not Sue Storm in this one. It's it's right. Rachel McAdams. Um, so uh, I really enjoyed that whole sequence, but I also had like massive issues with it as well, watching it the first time. When I, when I watched it and John Krasinski got it, I was like, Morgan's going to hate this. Um, That's, yeah, Morgan and, did hate it. Yeah, but I was just like, that was, a, I could not put my finger on it. I was like, I like the choice because it's like aggressive and strange, but there's something about it that I don't like. And I think what I realize is that it's like, it's stingy, you know? And normally I'm used to the MCU overgiving. The only like overgive we get here is that Rachel McAdams then sticks around for the rest of the movie, um, which I liked. You know, I liked her having a little more to do. You, I mean, I just, I just, yeah, I, I like that too. Um, I guess, I don't, I really don't care about this character at all. I like um, her. She, her best moment is when, all right, so we're jumping ahead a little bit, but when the bad Doctor Strange gets knocked out the window and impaled on a fence, and then she comes up close to him and his third eye opens and she screams. That is such a funny moment. I love that. Interesting thing that I have not seen anyone talk about, okay? This is another exclusive on this show. We're full of exclusives on these shows, yeah. okay? I saw a picture that Elizabeth Olsen posted of her makeup behind the scenes on, on the, the set. The wound that she gets in the battle with the Illuminati that she is bleeding from the entire time for the rest of this film, and it's where all the blood comes from where that she's covered in the whole time, is from her third eye. Huh. That's where she is bleeding from. The the in the set in the photos, you can see that like the main wound is right here. And I was like, that's interesting. I wonder if that was kind of a visual thing to having having to do with dream. I guess I guess it is shown as a consequence of dreamwalking. Yeah. So interesting. Hmm. So um, yeah, I wonder why they didn't keep that in there. All right. So well, well they did keep it in. They just yeah. don't reference it. Or I thought she was covered in like like oil. Other people, well, I thought it was because oh, it was brown. Well, maybe it, I thought it was it from is. the Ultron bots. Well, I think it is. By the way, the Ultron bots. Yeah. That was awesome. Funny. Yeah. yeah, I love that it's Ultron. Uh, that's so great. Um, yeah, so, um, no, I think that, well, I think, yeah, you're right. I mean, she's just covered in war battle, but like the, yeah. the, the wound on her head is, is from her third eye. And that's why I think when you see her, she is covered in a lot of, you know, a lot of right. shit. She's also probably covered in Illuminati blood. Right. Um, okay, so, so, right. so what happens next is Dr. Strange and Christine get banished to another dimension and Wanda gets America Chavez. The ch what did you think of the chase scene though? That was fun. 
Yeah, I thought that the jump scare at the end was dumb because it was like, oh, she's blasting through doors. And then this last one, no, she's not going to get through that door. There's a, lot of was goofy, like, there's a lot of goofy stuff there. The running thing too, the running shadow. It looks like a monster that's running and then it's just yeah. Dr. Strange for some reason. Like yeah. it's, they're, they're kind of goofy visual jokes, but I was like, I'll allow it. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I love, so when we, so we end up in this other universe, it's been mostly destroyed by incursion. And you get like vampiric evil Dr. Strange there. There's a lot. I love this whole sequence actually. I like the, the stairway that Dr. Strange is like going up into the fog into like nothing. Yeah, um, I like that's that one of the too. coolest images in the, in the movie. And then, you know, he and his other guy, other Dr. Strange have, a, have a, a conversation that turns into a fight, which turns into like they're fighting each other in musical notes. I thought that, okay, I thought that um, I liked the scene. I thought it went on a little too long. Maybe. Yeah. I, mean, I, thought, was, I felt like they were on that planet too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's where he has to fight the whole rest of the fight, too. Oh, well, can. right. No, I guess I guess more like just that scene specifically. Like, I feel like we didn't get there quick enough. But, okay, so, yes, they have so, a yeah. musical note fight. This is the thing, right? So, musical fighting in these, uh, magical fighting in these movies is, like, always just, like, a stream of light versus a stream of light, you know? It gets so much, like, versus whoosh. So yeah. I love this idea that, that that they were getting wacky with it. And I like that both Dr. Strangers just immediately participate. Like, oh yeah, we're weaponizing musical notes against each other now. Like, this is, let's do this. This is fun. Yeah. Um, it was so silly, but I thought it's so much better than what we normally get in terms of what magic sure. fighting looks like. I can, get on, I can get on board with that. I thought it was delightful. And I, and I liked I liked the Dr. Strange getting knocked out the window and it failed on the fence too. That was like yes. crazy that we get like, you know, you have to really commit to this like multiversal idea. If you're like, we're going to see multiple Doctor Stranges die in this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I like that they did that. Um, so yeah. So then we get to basically the end, which is like Wanda is on the ridiculously named Mount Wondagore. Um, I had to turn subtitles on and go back because I was like, no way, it's Mount Wondagore. No way that's called that. <laughs> and no way that no one put it together before you got there. Right, so uh, so Wong and America and, and, and her are there, and in order to get there, Doctor Strange dreamwalks into his own corpse, which in the trailers and stuff, I thought that was gonna be some evil multiversal right. Doctor Strange. Right. I did not right. think that guy was gonna be our hero, and it was so great. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I really liked the inclusion of, like, because I, d I mean, I might be wrong here, but I did not expect that whatsoever. And the idea that we teed up dreamwalking and then it's like, oh, well, we can do that because there is another Dr. Strange on that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like it's, a very, it's a very funny Chekhov's gun. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, and I love the cape of ghosts, like when he harnesses the ghosts to become- Me like, too. That was great. I didn't catch this, I didn't catch it the second time that it's, um, like I got up this idea. Mm, she's like yeah. you're the master of the dark arts use it you know and he's like yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. and I, it does support your thesis that that's the way that his powers work it's just about your mind so like you get the idea and you can do it the trick is just having yeah. the idea so um yeah i love that bite i love when he when corpse dr strange gets to give america job as a pep talk like it's so we've there's been a bunch of these i mean wanda gets a pep talk from hawkeye in Age of Ultron, yeah. which is like great. That's one of my favorite early Avengers moments is Hawkeye telling her like, you, you know, you walk out of here an Avenger, you know? Yeah. And she like comes out just like in full force. Yeah. Um, that's a great moment. So anyway, I love that there's a pep talk in this and he's like, you're going to kick that witch's ass. But yeah. he's like, he's like a, you know, corpse that's falling apart as he's saying it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, he, uh, that whole sequence, I don't know, I liked it. I like, I, I really like that the monsters like, sh like awaken and then bow to her kind of thing. Like where she's like immediately already recognizes like, no, this is a shrine to me. This is my thing. Right. <laughs> like, you know, like, it's like, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I liked Wong, Wong's inclusion in that whole thing. Yeah, I like when he gets that first rock monster with the rope through the head. Yeah. Like, yeah, Wong, you're my guy. The, ro the rope 
is uh that that they i mean they use it at the beginning too i that's a great that's a great weapon yes um, um do you think wanda's dead i had that i wrote that to you too i wrote that yeah. as a question for you um i don't know because it could go a few different ways right if we want elizabeth olsen to come back you could just have alternate universe good witch wanda True. show up um but there's something about the imagery of when she brings the mountain down on herself. Yeah. Which I like that nobody defeats her, really. Yeah. Like America defeats her with ideas and showing her the error of her ways, but she really is the only person who can take herself out. But yeah. so when she does, there's like this burst of red energy, you know? Yeah. And I was right. like, what is that? Is that supposed to show you? I think it's, pur I think it's purposely vague. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, I was talking with the owner of a comic book shop that I go to. And he was kind of like, I think that she's like in a, in a, like another plane, like a, like a hell type plane, mm -hmm. you know, like somewhere that she's going to be able to become like full force evil villain. Um, like, or, you know, he, he had, like, he basically brought it into the idea that we need some sort of dark mystical tie in to Moon Knight, Blade, Black Knight, like all these other like ground oh, level. He, he was talking about Ghost Rider because he was saying that Ghost Rider needs to be introduced if they're gonna do this type of kind of thing. And he said, you know, who's to say how that plays out? But if you, if you throw Scarlet Witch in there as like a, you know, all powerful demon kind of thing, yeah. like, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, I think she either never comes back or she comes back good, though, because I think we or or a, or a sort of neutral Magneto type. Yeah, because we because we because we've already played it out. Yeah, we've done maximum yeah. evil already. Yeah. So you know, it's got to be somewhere else. But I don't yeah, know. I, it's. I agree. I think it's it's equally likely we just never see Elizabeth Olsen in the MCU again. Um, yeah, I yeah, I wonder how much I, I wonder about that. Um, but. I, I think her story arc played out great. So mm -hmm. if we don't, then we don't. Um, but I think it's kind of hard to say because like she's so hot right now and she's so hot right now because of WandaVision in this movie. It seems weird to end it there. Well, this is what you got to look at. You got to look at who's on the vertical on Disney Plus when you go to the Marvel section. Okay, here's who it is. Uh, Black Panther, Shang-Chi, Captain Marvel, Captain America, Sam Wilson, Loki, um, Shuri, Thor, and then we have our two wild cards, Black Widow and Wanda. Mm, <laughs> now, nice. we know for certain that Scarlett Johansson is not coming back. <laughs> no, they <laughs> that, really that, put the... that bridge really got burned. I know. It's so sad, too. Yeah. So, so at, I least guess... you at least you probably made like more money than she ever could have imagined off of that settlement right so so i guess you can't really say either way what that means because it does feel like we're spotlighting a bunch of our new folks but like black panthers on there too so yeah but like legacy is legacy at this point for black right. panther you know yeah. and also they have another movie coming up so who knows what they're going to do with that thing, man? Who knows what they have? They might have. I would not be surprised if they didn't have some footage with him because I, I think Ryan Coogler knew, and I also think that I he do. obviously I he recorded a bunch of stuff for What If. So I think so too. We'll see. And ho hopefully, it's not. Um, I don't think that they would do anything to tarnish the usage. Like I don't think that they're going to CGI him in. You know, I think it's going to be like. A, if they have something, they have something. If they don't, they don't. I never saw Rise of Skywalker, so I don't really know what they did with Carrie Fisher. Um, but it certainly seemed like what they were doing there was pretending they had the footage so they could CGI her in. Um, and yeah. luckily, the, so the fact that Marvel has not said we have some footage with Chadwick Boseman we didn't use right. would indicate to me that they're not going to CGI him in. Right. They might really have some footage of him. They might not use it, but yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, so my other thing I just wanted to tell you about this movie is that I did not watch the post credit scenes. <laughs> what? I This one I knew. I knew that Charlize Theron um, yeah. pops up for like a quick yeah. credit, uh, 
uh, credit scene. I saw like a screenshot of it. Charlie's there and posted okay. it. Actually. And yeah. I was like, okay, that's fine. You know what I mean? I was like, and I was like, I already saw this, like they did with Harry Styles. Like, I know what it looks like. I know this scene. And when Doctor Strange ended with him falling down the street in pain and the third eye coming out, smashed to yeah. black, I was yeah. like, perfect, no notes, I'm out. Like, yeah. I was like, I'm done. I don't want to, I don't want to see Doctor Strange again in another scene. Yeah. Like, I want this to be it. So I was just his like, third okay, eye, his I'm third done. eye does open with Clea. And he's like, all right, let's go. And it opens. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So I looked up what the scene, scenes were, and I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to see him already having solved that problem with his third eye. Like, I love that being the perfect Sam Raimi ending, right? Yeah. Um, where like if we never picked up the story of Doctor Strange again, it's fine. Still, other fuels help defend America's shores and skies. So the last two scenes. Yeah, yeah. So it's so it's just Clea shows up and then they go right. Yeah. And basically, Clea is uh, from the Dark Dimension and longtime like love interest of Doctor Strange in the comic book. So I don't know what they're going to yeah. do there. But she cuts, she t has a time knife and <laughs> she, ah. not, not a time knife. Well, isn't that a, that's the good place, right? Or something like that. She's like, knife. oh, yeah, you yeah. saw the time knife. Yeah. No, she doesn't, she has a knife that she cuts and the, and the like universe opens. Uh -huh. But what you can see in it is Dormammu. And what's Dormammu again? You know, he's the big bad from the first movie that that uh, Doctor Strange does the time loop on. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. But the thing with Dormammu is that he's kind of like this, like, um, dark dimension being that, you know, sh they could have a lot of reasons for going to see or whatever. Yeah. Um, but um, you may not see him it's, it's specifically, but it's like his dimension. It's like right. his colors and stuff. Um, and she's like related to him in some way. She's like his daughter or something like that. Um, the other scene, do you know what the other scene is? Is a Bruce, just a Bruce Campbell joke, right? It's, it's Bruce Campbell, Campbell still punching himself and yeah. then it stops and he goes, oh my God, it's over. He goes, it's over. <laughs> then it okay, ends. well, that's a funny, I like that as a joke, but I just, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm generally anti post credit scenes. And I just thought sooner or later I have to make a stand. It's really hard when you're in the theater to resist the urge to just sit there and wait. But I thought I'm home. It's very easy to just click close tab on my laptop and just walk away. It's very easy to just fast forward too, dude. <laughs> well, but I don't want to, I'm saying I don't want to see them. I know. That's um, the thing. I, I no, think I there's so many, so many uh, movies, so many of these uh, Marvel movies have like perfect endings that then get undercut by a post credit scene. Like, I, I disagree with you about the Harry Styles one. I really like the Harry Styles one. I, I know you don't like the CGI. Yeah, that Pat Oswalt thing looked so bad. It looked like a dude, screensaver from the 90s. Dude, I, like I needed a tee up because I, I left that movie being like, what the fuck did I just watch? Sorry, I'm swearing. The, um, <laughs> Like, like I left that movie being like, okay, so how does this in, enter into anything? And with- It might not. <laughs> with, yeah, but with Star Fox showing up, it's like, okay, we're on a ship. We've got the guy, like yeah. the guy is gonna show up and tell us what to do. Yeah. This is our guy. I, I honestly think they're gonna pick and choose from the Eternals and just kind of pop them into different teams. I, I think, think, I, think that's all I, 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 I wonder, what storyline will yeah. tie them in you know because like we'll see i think random eternals will show up or whatever but um okay my main issue with eternals like random random complaint is that icarus is superman he's the good guy and you made him the bad guy okay so i needed star fox to show up at the end and be like Hey, what's up, baby? I'm fucking Harry Styles in the MCU right now. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, okay, give that to me. Like, I I liked that inclusion as a as a cap off. The two Doctor Strange, I did not need. And actually sitting in the theater waiting for the Bruce Campbell scene, I was actually like, I can't believe you made me wait for this. Yeah. Because because it was so it was literally like a two second him being like, it's over. Like. Well, um, that, that is funny, but I agree that if I had sat in the theater, I probably would have been like, not funny enough. <laughs> yeah. But that still isn't all. 
I'm good with no more post credit sequences. I think we should drop them in phase five. I think we should. I think we should drop them in phase five. Memo to Kevin Feige. They they might. They I I I feel like they are held hostage by them. Yeah. And I don't think they. I think that they're slowly coming to the realization like, oh, we don't need to necessarily do that. Before we leave this, mm-hmm. have you watched any Miss Marvel yet? No. It's awesome. Really. It's okay. so good. It's. Uh, like it's 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 so good uh, all right well I'll, I'll i will i will try it at some point and i i don't think we'll ever talk about moon knight because uh why um because i'm probably never gonna finish it um yeah. and i right now Dude, I, I, just, finished, I finished it and i feel nothing hmm. i just started watching westworld new season of westworld and um it's gonna take me 100 years to watch that show because Dude, everything <laughs> everything's taken yeah, dude i i yeah. have uh stranger things i haven't made it through i know you don't watch stranger things uh stranger things i haven't made it through i haven't made it through obi-wan uh i have not uh haven't been able to start umbrella academy which i love which is a high recommendation for me if if i i doubt you've watched it right nope umbrella academy is a lot of fun dude Hmm. um and so yeah it's like there's so much stuff that i'm like I don't know yeah. when I'm going to be able to get through it, but Miss Marvel is they're short episodes and it's worth it. Well, maybe we'll, maybe our next one will be either Miss Marvel or Thor, Love and Thunder, whichever one, you know, um, it'll maybe probably be Thor Love and Thunder at this point, but yeah. based upon our track record, it'll probably be Thor. Yeah. But, um, which I'm planning on seeing in the theaters like five times. Yeah. Early reviews of it. Mm-hmm. People say it's the best Marvel movie that's ever been made interesting okay which i'm like i'm like okay you've you've got the director of maybe the other best marvel movie ever among made. the best um you have thor which is just a ballpark you know come on man anything with chris hemsworth in it i love yeah you have christian bale as the villain you have one of the greatest actors of all time as the villain yeah like this thing's gonna be wild you want to see my action figures we're going to run out. This Zoom meeting is going to end in like 10 seconds on its own. Oh, but, no. Well, let's just let it end on these. There's Korg. <laughs> There's Thor. All right. All right.